Okay, welcome back. In the last tutorial, we implemented the interactable class and we also did the pickup class. Now what we're going to do is modify our character to have an inventory and add some functions like interact, toggle inventory, and so on. So what I've done here is um, I've just went to edit, project settings, input, I went to action mappings, and I added two new actions. I've got toggle inventory, and I have interact. And those are mapped to I and E respectively. So go ahead and close that. Let's open up our character. So just double click on it to open it up. And now that it's opened up, we need to add some new stuff to it. I'm also going to add um, interactable.h. And also, I need to add pickup.h. So, pickup. Pickup.h. And there's a weird bug where adding header files breaks your build and you get these weird errors on your class and you can't compile. So, to fix that, we need to build our solution. And once it's built, we just go ahead and close Visual Studio. And then just double click on our character again to reopen the class. And that will get rid of those errors. It is annoying, and I don't know why that bug exists, but that's the only way that I've found to get around it. We're going to come down and add a private section to our class. And um, this is going to come with a couple different functions. So let's map some functions to our input that we added. You remember we added toggle inventory and interact, so let's map those. So first one, void toggle inventory, and then void interact. I'm going to add some comments here. Toggles the inventory, and interacts with the current interactable, provided there is one. So if there's an interactable object in front of the player, interact with it. If there isn't an interactable object in front of the player, then don't worry about interacting with it. Okay, um, now we're going to add some other stuff. What we're going to add now is we need to add, um, let's see, there's a really good function, really um, interesting. It's big and it's called every tick. But it's the one that I have decided we'll add next, uh, and that is check for interactables. This is the function used to check if there is an interactable in front of the player. And all it does is it just raycasts, and it says, does our raycast hit an interactable? If it has, then we know there's an interactable there. If it hasn't, then there's no interactable there, right? So, um, let's add that as well. So checks for interactable items directly in front of the player using a line trace called on our per tick basis so we'll just describe what the function does and this is void check for interactables now because this function is called on a per tick basis uh, we need to add the tick function into our character to do that, just come here, virtual void tick. It takes float delta time as a parameter and we're overriding it. And there we go. Once this little green line comes up, just right click and go create definition. And now we have a definition of tick. Inside of tick, we're going to call the superclasses tick function. And then we're also going to use our check for interactables. Now we haven't um, implemented check for interactables yet, or any of those other functions. So let's do that now. So right click, create definition. Create definition. Close that. 
create the definition for interact, and then create the definition for check for interactables. Okay, so we've got check for interactables, interact, and toggle inventory in there. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, implement my check for interactables function. Uh, and this is a quite interesting function to write. Uh, this will give you a little bit more insight into line tracing and ray casting. So if you liked that video, um, you're going to like what we do here. So with the um, check for interactables, we are going to do a line trace see if our line trace hits anything and if it has hit something then what we can do is return that and i want to comment this really well just so we absolutely know what everything's doing so to line trace get the start and end traces it will say if vector start trace equals First person camera component, so get the camera and then get the location of the camera. To get the end trace, what we're going to do is we're going to say get the forward vector of the camera, which is just the space in front of the camera, so get forward vector, times that by reach, which we haven't added yet, and I'm going to add that in a second and then add a start trace onto that. Now reach is the reach of the player. It's how far we can reach to pick up an object. So let's define reach. The player's reach. It's going to be float reach. In our constructor, let's set the value of reach. And we'll set it to 250, so the player can reach fairly far in front of it, uh, but not too, you know, ridiculously far. The next thing we're going to do is declare a hit result to store the um, raycast hit in. So to do that, very, very simple, all we do is say if hit result, hit result. So we've now defined a hit result. Initialize the query params and ignore the actor. What's going to happen if we don't uh, ignore the actor is the raycast might hit our actor and return that. We don't want it to do that. We want it to check for items, not you know check for the player. That's ridiculous. So we're going to ignore the I um, the actor. <clears throat> so to do that, we say if collision query params. Collision, in fact, a lot of people like to say CQP, and that's a little bit easier, so let's just do that. And we'll say CQP dot add ignored actor this, and in this case this means the player, because we're inside the player class, so if we say this, we're referring to the player. So we've added the player as an ignored actor. And we've set up everything else. We can now cast the ray, which is the, uh, the fun part, right? So, cast the ray, or cast the line trace, I guess, if we want to be official about it. And we'll say get world line trace single by channel. We say um, hit result, start trace. In trace the collision channel, so um, that's ECC underscore world dynamic we're going to use. And then CQP, which is the collision query param. So now we've um, casted a line trace. Let's see if what we've hit is an interactable. To do that, we're going to say A interactable. Potential interactable, and I'm calling it potential interactable because as of now, we don't know if it is a uh, interactable object or not. So we're going to say potential interactable, and we'll cast that into a 
interactable. And then that is just hit result dot get actor. And now we have either got the actor or if we haven't hit an interactable, we won't have the actor. So what we need to do is say if potential interactable equals null. So if it is equal to null, if it has not been defined, then set the help text to be displayed on the screen, which we don't have yet, so uh, let's make that now, I guess. The player's help text. That is going to be an F string. There we go, so help text is equal to nothing. Because if we're not looking at anything, you don't want it to display anything, right? If we're looking at something, we can say, press E to pick it up. But if we're not looking at anything, we want the help text to be equal to nothing. We'll also set the current interactable, which, oh, I didn't make that. Okay, to make the current interactable, the interactable, the player, is currently looking at. So we're going to say a interactable current interactable. So if we're not looking at an interactable, we'll set the current interactable to be null pointer. And then we will return, meaning we will leave the function. Because there's no point continuing on with the function if we know that we are not looking at a potential interactable, right? So, um, if it is not equal to null though, so if it is equal to something, then we will say current interactable equals potential interactable. So we now know that the potential interactable is an interactable, and we can set it equal to the current one. We'll then set the help text equal to the potential interactable. We'll get the help text, which I have called interactable help text, like that. So now it's going to say proceed to pick up or whatever, if we're looking at an interactable. If we're not, it's going to say nothing, right? All right, so that is the check for interactables function, and that was a little bit of work to um, get going, but, you know, it's all worth it. And uh, let's now do the interact one. The interact function is incredibly easy. So we're saying if there is an interactable, if we're currently looking at an interactable, so if it's not equal to null pointer, then we know we're looking at an interactable. So to interact with that interactable, all we need to do is call the interact implementation. And there we go. So if we're looking at something and the player presses the E key to interact, um, if we're looking at something, it will call the interact implementation, whatever that may be. So that's cool, quite easy. Um, and then the toggle inventory I'm not going to put in yet because we haven't built a HUD yet, so I can't even put anything in here yet. We can't work with the HUD. I haven't even made one yet. We need to take care of that first. So code to open inventory goes here and the last thing before i cut this tutorial off and end it is we're just going to map all those functions that i made to the input so input component bind action interact ie priest this at inventory character interact um, and then we'll map the toggle inventory functions Bind action, toggle inventory, I pressed this A inventory character, toggle inventory. Last thing before I cut it off and we go to the next tutorial, if you wanted to make a really cool quick inventory where you just hold I and that brings it up and as soon as you let go of I the inventory closes, you could set that up using bind actions using I E pressed and I E um released but i'm not doing that i'm doing an inventory that once you open it it stays up until we close it anyways i'll see you at the next tutorial